Hi, I'm Eddie Stevens. I'm out here in the beautiful Bosque in Corrales, New Mexico. It's the forest by the river. It is more beautiful in real life than it will look to you in this video. Um, this is the Rio Grande or Rio Grande um, flowing next to me. That flows from north to south, from somewhere to somewhere else. Probably ends in the ocean. Is that how rivers work? I don't really know. I thought it would be nice while I'm out here to uh, do a rugby rant to banter video for you. Um, I'm quite secluded. I've run a long way. I run here frequently, as I've mentioned before, so you should fucking know. Um, and I run far enough. I'm not saying I run a long way, but I run far enough that most of the pussies can't make it out here. Um, but there's always a chance that there'll be somebody in the bushes spying on me. Which does fill me with a, a little bit of anxiety. Now, the last video I did for Rugby Rant Banter on this channel you're watching right now was a video on props. Do you remember that? Did you see it? The uh, propocious propping problems um, propaganda that I promoted uh, last week. If you haven't seen that, check it out. It's right there. You're already there. Um, and I figured we'd stick with the front row situation with English rugby specifically and talk about hookers. I don't know about you, but I got big hooker problems in my life. Now my last video, my prop video, there was a lot of cheap puns and stupid jokes. And obviously when you're talking about hookers, it's easy to fall into that trap. But um, it won't be like the prop video this time. It's too easy, it's too cheap. If it was, if I was in prop mode, I'd be talking about, I've just stabbed myself with a thorny bush. I'd be talking about um, being prop positioned by propstitutes. Um, it doesn't make sense because this is about hookers anyway, but that's where the joking ends. Let's get serious, please. By the way, really quickly, I have a uh, true story about an encounter I had with a hooker, a prostitute that is, um, on the hard streets of Albuquerque. Um, I was doing some shopping and I was actually with my girlfriend, ex-girlfriend now at the time, and uh, she would like lagged behind and I thought I'd escaped, but not. But as I was trying to get away, this very attractive black woman approached me and said something crazy like, hey, five bucks and I'll blow you. And I was like, oh my God, what a bargain. Um, but my girlfriend's here. And uh, the black lady, the prostitute said, um, oh, is that your girlfriend? And I looked and she was actually pointing at someone else, but she was more attractive than my girlfriend so I said yes to brag and she said and then the the prostitute said um well you better just give me 20 bucks anyway otherwise I'll tell her that you were uh, uh propositioning me and I went that's ridiculous she said yeah and also by the way I'm a dude yeah and I looked down I saw the bulge not too impressive but still for a woman it was impressive and uh, I was like, oh my God, this African-American woman, she's going to get me in trouble with my girlfriend. And then I snapped and I went, oh my God, that's right. I'm dealing with a black male prostitute. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, I was choking on my own jizz. In all seriousness, though, i got no problems with the trans community. It's my favorite form of por pornography. Um, and anyone who listens to my podcast will back me up on that. Hookers, 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 English hookers. Um, for a while there, it was a bit of a problem position for us, and maybe it still is. Um, just running my head through a brick wall of ideas, uh, first name that comes to mind is obviously Jamie George, who is still the real deal, still a world-class hooker. If we were in a World Cup final today, which is insane, um, but imagine if that could happen. You would want Jamie George starting, of course. And then you would have Theo Dan as your backup. I think it was the right combination for that World Cup. But Jamie George is 30-something and probably won't go too much longer. For now, I'd say, you know, yeah, keep him as, as first-choice hooker with Theo Dan being groomed um, to take over eventually. The only question mark over Theo Dan, of course, is his uh, line-out throwing, which is a big problem if it continues to be a problem. Um... And as I'm saying that, you know, the natural conclusion you would make uh, is, well, he's inexperienced, he's young, he'll get better at it. But looking back to when Jamie George was a youngster, when he was first breaking through 
on the England scene, I'm pretty sure he was throwing in was a strength of his, even in his early 20s. I don't remember that being a weakness for him. And England has not had a lot of trouble. Um, I can't figure out where the lens is. Am I looking at you now? I hope so. Um, England has a lot of trouble, oh, sorry, does not have a lot of trouble coming up with exciting talent at hooker. We got lots of options, which I'm gonna talk about. The problem is, when it comes to international level, you really have to, they have to have these fundamentals down um, to the point that, like, in some positions, you know, being uh, explosive, uh, an explosive athletic talent can sort of offset any weaknesses you might have in terms of skill set. Um, for example, you've got a massive number eight. He doesn't need to be a rugby genius. He just needs to get the ball and run hard. Um, but at hooker, you know, although obviously a hooker doesn't have to throw in, realistically, it's the hooker who's going to be throwing in. Um, if you've got a, a powerful, exciting hooker like Theo Dan, but you can't trust him throwing into the lineouts, it's just not going to work. You can't risk it. That being said, I think, the, as I said, uh, right now, Theo Dan is second on the conveyor belt, second on the... Um, second choice behind Jamie George. But who's next? If Jamie George gets injured or decides to retire, if, that, if he hasn't yet retired from international rugby, which I don't think he has, who do we have? Well, here's a few names. Controversial selection, but I've been a big fan of uh, little Harry Thacker for a while now, the problem there being the fact that he is fairly little. Um, but I've always defended him and said, you know, he doesn't play like he's a small player. He's sort of, he's so full of effervescence and rugged power that he makes up for it. And you don't tend to see his size being an issue. Um, in fact, just the other day I was watching a game and my girlfriend said, he's short and stout. And I said, yes, he is. He's a little teapot, which is not a nice nickname for a, for a hooker. Harry the little teapot Thacker. But point is he is a little on the small side but sort of makes up for it now if you're a size queen which a lot of you are you probably want to go for someone like George McGuigan uh, who is a great player and I got no problems with him but just moving back to uh, Harry the little teapot Thacker for a second you know I watched him play uh, against who was he playing against Sale the other day and he was in my fantasy team and I got very upset because I suddenly saw Ogre was playing hooker. And I went, oh, Jesus H fucking bollocks Christ. I'm not going to get any points. But then all of a sudden, I saw Harry Thacker. But he was in a seven shirt. So I still get the points. But my point is, I watched a game, a full match, with Ogre, who I'd forgotten all about. Had you? You probably had, you idiot. Um, I watched a whole game where Thacker was playing seven. And Ogre uh, was at hooker. But Thacker was doing the throwing in. And this created two problems for me. First of all, seeing Thacker play at uh, seven was the first time that actually he did look a little on the light side. I didn't see him... Maybe he was just having an off game, but this time around I was a little bit concerned. Uh, he didn't seem to have enough oomph when he carried. In contrast to Ogre, who was an absolute monster ball carrier. An ogre, if you will. Um... So I thought, wow, does this shift everything? Do I need to forget about my little teapot um, and switch to Ogre, who has been in, in an England squad, you might remember. But then I thought, what did I just talk about earlier? The importance of throwing in. Ogre wasn't throwing in. Thacker was throwing in, which means at the very least, Thacker is better at throwing in. Now, Thacker is very good at throwing the ball in. He's pretty accurate. But... It was a bit of a tricky match to watch because I wanted to sort of impulsively push Ogre up the pecking order to right behind Theo Dan and say, this is the guy we need. But until I see him playing hooker at full capacity where he's being tested at the lineouts, don't know if I can risk it. Does that make sense? Someone's walking by. Someone walked by and heard me talking like a weirdo. And they'll have heard my weird... Uh, Australian accent, even though I'm English. They'll think there's a weird Australian talking gibberish. 
um, thinking he's some kind of YouTube star. I'm not. I don't know what to do. I'll wait for them to leave. This is horrible. Now, if your main concern is you want a hooker who does the basics right and is mobile and does his job, you could have someone like uh, Jack Walker, but I'm not a big fan of his. Um, and I think at this point we're already running fairly thin, aren't we? We've got Jamie George, we've got Theo Dan, we've got uh, little Harry Thacker, little Harry, Harry the Little Teapot Thacker as an option. We've got Ogre as a less tested option. I think George McGuigan makes the most sense, probably, as the next, next one on the line. Um, Jack Walker was at the World Cup but barely played, which also doesn't instill confidence. Um, who am I forgetting? Because I know I'm forgetting people. I didn't, I didn't plan this video very well, and there are spies in the woods. Um, but let me know what you think. As, a, as of right now, I would be tempted to say Jamie George is starting at the next Six Nations with Theo Dan on the bench. But please, can we make up our minds about the next in line? And can it be, can Augury get a shot? If not, George McGuigan. I would probably go with one of those two, okay? Thanks for watching. Um, check out my podcast, Rugby Ranta Banter, if you haven't already, which I expect you probably have. It's the best. Um, and like and subscribe. My arm's fucking killing me from doing this. Bye. Bye. Right into the dark.